you're alive. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Hair Nerds Live. We are here, Salt Lake City, Utah, at Taylor Andrews Academy. Happy to be here. Um, I, we just gave two great classes. I am here with friends today. Uh, we have North American Hairstyling Award winner and texture, Ms. Lauren Moser. And also a little bit later on, we have Dallin Flint, who also won Avant Garde and People's Choice for 2015. That's gonna be showing you guys some amazing hairstyles from the Avant Garde collection, from a little bit from Lauren's collection, and a little bit from my 2017 um, Naha nominated men's collection. So um, you wanna tell he hello to the, uh, the Hair Nerd community? Hello, Hair Nerd community. We're really excited to be here tonight, um, or today, I should say, it feels like nighttime. Well, night, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, we coming out we of- don't even know what day it is. Yeah, we've been on the road <laughs> for over a week, so we're, I just asked him what day it was. Um, so we're excited to be here, and it is a Naha winning episode of Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to be demoing my one of my looks from the 2015 texture collection that I won, and we're just excited to be here. Absolutely. So for everybody out there watching, make sure that you tag somebody to tag somebody to like somebody, and also you know alert the rest of the hair nerd community because uh, we only have an hour with you guys, but uh, we want to show you some of the latest tips and tricks that we use to create our collections. Also, big shout out to the Professional Beauty Association who puts on the North American Hairstyling Awards. Um, if you have not gotten your tickets for Naha yet, there's still tickets available. Make sure that you go to www.probeautyassociation.org, get your tickets, or go to their Facebook page as well, and they can help you out there. So, And if um, you've never been to Naha, um, as a stylist, and, and yes, we won and we've been nominated, but just as a stylist, it's so inspiring to go and be around fellow stylists that are looking for inspiration and it's always great to keep yourself motivated and classes are amazing but this award show is the cream of the crop it's the best of the best uh, and seeing all those pictures and just who wins and who is nominated it's just such an inspiring night it is. that um, i think every hairstylist should go every year but if you don't go every year you should at least try and go once because it, it definitely is a game changer well not only as licensed professional lauren and i also um we're going to be sitting on the beacon panel with larry curtis who's the owner of taylor andrews school and um we enjoy like teaching the students like we this is our second day here yeah. at taylor andrews we just left the international beauty show in new york where we did two days of main stage as well so you know remember this uh for all the hair the, the hair nerd community out there Education in our industry is not an option. It is definitely a must. Um, we got our cameraman back there, so if you guys have questions about anything we're doing, please make sure that you ask questions, be nice or else, and uh, we're going to keep going. So Yeah, and um, so often we get questions like, I'm graduating school and I want to do more editorial, and you know, honestly, in this industry, it's not just what you know, but who you know. So absolutely. by going to these award shows, you're putting yourself in a situation to get to know the best of the best, and then you never know who you can assist or who you can meet or... The opportunities that you come that could come your way so we always tell people it's not just what you know it's who you know and being in the right place at the right time will get you really far in life so it's important to show up and show out and absolutely have some fun well you know it's very cliche but your net your your network determines your net worth right so if you're around people that are successful and people who ultimately want to see you do really really well and do great things in this industry they're going to help to inspire you too so whether you are a licensed professional or a future professional in this industry the north american hairstyling awards and the whole pro beauty week is just an amazing time it so is. and pba does so much to support our industry absolutely. and it's you know the least we can do is support them back absolutely um, I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing real quick because yeah, sure. this is pretty tedious and then you know I can get going and then you can take over absolutely. Um, I'm recreating one of the main images of my winning collection and I love texture I love controlling the chaos um, so for this look I just used a cap a little fishnet cap here and I put it on her hair. It's crimped underneath just to add some texture. And if the cameraman can, you can actually come a little bit closer. Cool. And I'm using just this crochet hook to pull the hair through the cap to create these little fuzzy loops. And we're gonna do this all over. I start in the front because then I can work my way back. As I'm pulling hair from the back here, I have to make sure that it's not pulling these back into the cap. So as I'm pulling, I'm holding on to the piece in front of it and pulling it through just like that. And I do different sizes, some are thinner, some are thicker, and it adds to the textured look, the textured effect. Um, and this is just one of my favorite techniques to control, 
texture and to create a work of art using texture. Texture is, is chaotic. So in order to create an amazing piece of art, you have to control that chaos. So this is one of my favorite techniques, and I want you guys to try this, but try pulling them out even further and making them bigger, or pulling them out less and making them really small, and see what you can create with it. This is a great little technique that the, um, the finishes are endless. You can do a bunch of different things. So I'm gonna keep working on this and we'll come back to me in a little bit. Roderick's got a lot to share. And what, since you guys got this technique down, nobody needs to sit here and watch me do this. It's like awesome, paint awesome. You know, and actually this technique is one of the, one of the techniques that you use um, on the photo shoot and it was from your winning collection. I thought that was super, super cool. Still one of my favorite photos as well. Um, as you all know, I got nominated for the men's category this year and men's grooming and styling as a whole has been awesome. As you can see, this is my model Marcus right here. Make sure to uh, check him out as well. Um, Marcus is a barber instructor here at Taylor Andrews uh, Barbering School, but notice his mustache here. In my collection, I've put a real, real big focus on the mustaches as well as the haircuts. So men's grooming in itself, it should be from the neck up. All right, we want to make sure that I'm going to go back through and show you guys exactly how we styled his mustache, but also I want to take you through one of the haircuts that I normally do as well. So at our salon, I'm the main barber. I've actually gotten all large clients as well because mm -hmm. she kind of pushes them to me, but that's fine. So what I want to do is show you guys uh, while we're live is a three-step fade. So I like to actually cut with detachable blades. Um, this is an OA blade that cuts the hair at 1.2 milliliters. The other thing that I want to show you guys as well is there's always questions when we do classes and shows is how far or how high do I normally go up when it comes to a fade. So I like to use my comb. Everybody see my comb? Boop, 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 boop. All right, so my comb is here. Notice if I take my comb and I lay it right there behind his ear, that creates a panel. If I take this comb again and I roll it up, that'll be my second panel. Roll it again, that'll be my third panel. This area right here is where you want to stay away from. That is what we like to call an oh lord haircut. Sometimes you take the fade up too high and the only thing you can say is oh lord. So we want to make sure that we don't do that at all. So making sure that I keep everything together here. I'm going to hold his head to the side, ask him to close his eyes and relax his face. Once your client's face is relaxed, then all his whole face and the skin is now smooth. I'm going to take the smaller teeth on my comb, comb through, I want to see the texture, hold the ear down, and I'm going to make sure that the blade stays on the toe and not the heel. I'm going to make a C cutting motion here, and I'm going to take his first panel down below his occipital bone and around to the other side. So this is not now my first panel, okay? If you turn him around here, you can see that this is the completed look for this side. Control the head, control the body. Take my thumb, scoot it up, and make that first pass. Okay? So that's panel number one. Uh, I see Lauren is making some work as well. Lauren, can you tell them what you're doing right now? I'm just making my way back into the rest of her head. Um, this work can be pretty tedious. But when I do photo shoots, I like to, especially with a look like this, because it is so time consuming and tedious, usually we're on set for a good 12 to 14 hours. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we cry. <laughs> we don't ever eat. <laughs> this actual, this shoot in particular, I think I cried extra. We were shooting in a parking garage downtown Charleston, so it's pretty interesting. But um, to save time and energy and effort, I usually focus on just the part that the camera will see. So in the, in the collection that we did, this actual look, I really only went to about here on her head because you're never gonna see the back anyways. So sometimes it's better to work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And that way I could focus all of my effort on what is seen instead of what is not seen. I think so often stylists, and I do this too, is we're perfectionists. So we want to make sure that everything is done all the way. And sometimes that's just unnecessary and it's a waste of effort. So I'm going to keep dealing with this. And it looks like our, our, hey now. our third musketeer arrived. Hey, everybody. Look, listen, this is going to be the craziest, most funnest hair nerds event ever. Guess what? We got Naha winner, Uncle Naha Dal. finalist, mm -hmm. and also Naha winner, Dallin Flint in the building. Let's make some noise for Dallin. Ah, He's here. Hey, <laughs> hey everyone. Sorry I'm a little late. We were, uh, 
Obviously, we're here at Taylor Andrews Academy today, and <laughs> we have our own. Yeah, I have to work. <laughs> true. He's so, still got to earn his check. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and so we have our own version called Taha. So it's basically we've taken a Naha and done it here at Taylor Andrews. So we just announced the finalists, and Lauren and Roger were the judges, and Yay. So exciting. you heard them screaming out there. It was amazing. It was awesome. I know. I'm sorry we missed that part because that's that's the payoff for all that the judging so cool. we did. Yeah. So, Dallin, tell them what you got in store for the hair nerd community for today. Yeah, so uh, a few weeks ago, I was actually in Tokyo with the hair nerds, with Taylor Andrews again. Nice. Um, which was an amazing experience. And okay, bring the camera over here. So next time, see this right here, us two, we need to invite. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Tokyo and we uh, did a few things at a few schools. And I, I'm going to share my piece of the avant-garde that I've done out there in Tokyo. Awesome. So can you tell um, the hair nerd community about your inspiration? So Lauren went over about her collection and what inspired her. Yeah. Um, I talked a little bit about the mustache and men's grooming. Tell us a little bit about avant-garde and with you being an instructor, Lauren and I both teaching in schools, how, how do you kind of inspire your students to create as well with your new position here? Yeah, so my inspiration for this collection there, the piece that I did was I'm from Hawaii and the beautiful sunny lovely world out there. Absolutely. Um, and uh, my wife's Hawaiian, and we were just kind of like, what are we going to do different this year? And I'm, I'm usually known more for the crazy texture and the crazy avant-garde work, but I want to do something clean and something pretty. Um, so I was looking at some baskets that we have in Hawaii, that we've gotten from Hawaii, and I was like, I'm going to try some baskets with some hair. I've seen it done, I just never could execute the process. So trial and error, trial and error, finally figured it out. It was an amazing thing. And I think my job here as an educator doing stuff for Taylor Andrews is this world and this industry is the sky's the limit. You really can do anything. You can be behind the chair, you can be editorial, you can be doing hair for movies, anything you really want. And my job here as artistic director Taylor Andrews is to really just inspire the students to do great things and think outside the box and I seriously have one of the coolest jobs I get to travel. Yeah, you do. I've been to every hair show this year and to be able to take students and experience and be part of it and hang out with my friends, you know, after they're doing their thing and support them. And that's what it's really about for me is really inspiring each other and working with great people and keeping great people in your your group, you know. Pope the Barber says, attract the vibe that you want to be with your tribe. So, yeah. mm -hmm. And this is our tribe. Yeah, when you definitely. find good people, you really want to do great things with each other. And don't Absolutely. you feel like it's fun to sort of look at everyday objects that you would least expect to create a hairstyle out of? Yeah. And then find a way to create a hairstyle out of. I've done it with crocheting hair. I taught that here last year. Show them your technique with your hand. Mm -hmm. Where my hand finger looks. I, I, become, <laughs> I become crippled because of this after a month of it. So I had to teach myself how to crochet first and then how to crochet on hair, which was a whole nother level of difficult. Um, but yeah, we put ourselves through the ringers track. But you just have to step back and say, okay, here's my problem, where's my solution? Yeah. And so it's just a matter of finding different ways to do it. So how did you come up with this? Yeah, so we did, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. There should be some great graphs right on the back side. Right there, there you go. So I've taken real human hair. This is colored by one of my assistants and people, her name is Lindsay, she wears a Dallas so Roberts, which is real hair? Yeah, so this is real web hair, yeah. So what we've done is we... It reminds me of palms on Palm Sundays. Right? For all you Catholics out there, it's like <laughs> literally palms. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've done is we've hairsprayed this four or five times and went through a flat iron every single time. Any kind um, of hairspray? Or? Any, uh, probably your strongest hairspray. Okay. I've used Redkin, uh -huh. uh, the forceful one. The forceful one. Yeah, so we sprayed it, gone over it four or five times. Alex that went with us to Tokyo, she's an educator here as well, Taylor Andrews. She had her students doing this for me because I obviously have a job and right. things to do. So, <laughs> so we do put you, students to work. Really work? And, yeah, you know, right? I think that's an awesome question. So a lot of times when people see us at hair shows or on stages and stuff like that, this is not like our real thing. So we also have jobs, we have to make money. Uh, you know, Lauren still, Lauren and I both still work behind the chair. Uh, we're, you know, in the school as well. Dallin still works in the school as well. So for all of you guys that are out there that aspire to be uh, editorial stylist or platform artist, or whatever the case may be, this is your foundation. We spoke about it a little bit earlier where we talked about taking the stairs and not necessarily always having to take the elevator. Um, for those beacon students that are out there as well, both myself, 
Lauren and Dallin are going to be on the Beacon panel, so we're looking forward to seeing everybody out there as well. Um, so, Dallin, you want to talk a little bit about that, and then we'll yeah. come back and um, I'll so, show you guys this. Did you did you spray it every time? So you'd spray it, flat iron, spray it, flat spray, iron, spray it, flat okay. iron, spray it, flat okay. iron, spray it. So I think that's always hard for people to visualize what yeah. you're doing. And so then what we did is we took those pieces and we mosh posh, so I basket weaved with the you know the variations of color. This is Lonza's vibes color. And we ombre them into it, but I really wanted to showcase more of the color towards the end. So we basket weave, cut off the ridges of the wets, and then mosh podged it. So my trial and error with this mm -hmm. was I diluted it with water at first, mm -hmm. and it kind of made my color more a hot mess, okay. <laughs> if you will. It was kind of like pixelated. So then the next time I did it with my second one is I just put Mosh Podge over it. So they do have a flat, and then they have a shiny. I think if I was going to do this again next time, I would do more matte. Okay. More but like obviously, yeah, sure. but more for, you know, doing this, you know, stage work and stuff. Yeah. Kind of shiny. Yeah. You know, I thought it would be cool. So we basically we Mosh Podge and now so I can bend it, move it, almost create anything out of it. Now, right. as a photographer, how does the shiny react in a, in a, in a photo? So doing photos, you know, now that uh, uh, me and my wife, Kristen, we've been shooting for a while now, doing a lot of Nahas. We did 16 collections this year. Um, no big deal. No big deal. Um, Small I think with the lighting for me, it's just really finding what works for you. Yeah. So, so do you feel like a matte you, finish would work better on camera because you're not fighting the reflections? Uh huh. So uh, we did this collection prior to going. If you go to my Instagram, it's on there, and you can see that we use actually more a gel to mute the matte because okay. it was like it was too shiny at first. Yeah. To kind of put a gel in the background to help with that. Okay. So it just really depends. I think you know, as a photographer, kind of where, where you're going for the look. Yeah. And I think is as hairdresser or dressers doing photo work, it's really whatever your vision is, you know, and kind of figuring that out that. as you go. So prior to what I did is I made a wig with the same thing, and we cornrowed her. And what we're going to do is we're going to now build this piece on top of it with donuts. But in the meantime, I need you to grab me some bobby pins because I forgot to grab those because I was in there earlier. You can grab me a box of bobby pins and hairpins, that'd be awesome. Awesome, awesome. So again, um, we we got three Naha people in here. Um, I think that it's very cliche, but it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. So uh, I wanted to bring this to the Hair Lab team. The, uh, the, I wanted to bring the Hair Lab team out. We're doing a collaboration with Taylor Andrews, but also a uh, big shout out to the Hair Nerds as well for allowing us to use their platform to share our love and passion for the industry. Um, so what I did right here for, for Marcus, and this is actually part of my men's collection as well, I use clipper blades instead of guards. So I started off here with a triple lot blade. That actually got me for my first panel right here. I started for my second panel, I used the number one blade here. And then for my third panel, I used, I'm sorry, I use the 1A blade. So notice, by me using the blades, it gave me a nice, even blend up into this section right here, which I'm going to actually use texturizing shears to actually uh, to soften that hair. So again, what I want to do, especially when I'm cutting men's haircuts, I want it to look really, really nice. For my men's collection, that actually this young lady right here next to me, my fiance Lauren, helped to inspire me. We were on the couch one day, and she said, "Babe, you know, why don't you do something about beards?" for men's grooming. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. And of course, I'm a barber. I'm not a stylist. Uh, she actually actually told me, she said, you know what, why don't you stay in your lane and start to focus on what you're good at versus what you're not. So the first five years that we <laughs> that I shot for Naha, I always looked at what everybody else was doing versus what I knew that I'm good at. So my, my I guess my advice to everybody that's out there in hair nerd community is that Stay in your lane until it opens up. If you're a barber, be a barber. Be a barber and submit work that you're proud of. Um, over the past years, I can say that I was very, very proud of my work, but it wasn't something that I felt really, really like, okay, you know what, this is me, this is my staple, I'm a barber, and this is what we do, okay? I think that's a good point that you bring up too, is because I think when I first started doing hair and doing Naha, mm -hmm. I was introduced by Taylor Andrews. Mm -hmm. Right. And I wanted to shoot like every Everything. category, and right. I was like going crazy, seven, six collections every year. And because I was you're like, you have to teach yourself like all, the, you know, yeah. each category, it's, it's a lot, and then you end up struggling. And then the year that I finally got nominated and won is because, you know, I had a photographer that helped me kind of hone in a few things and understand like, this is what you need to do, and focus on one collection at a time. And like you said, 
you know, if you're a barber, be a barber. If you right. want to be, do this, do this. And I think that's a great advice for anyone that wants to do new Naha is really focus on what you're great at and what you're good at. Well, Absolutely. and I think it's important to, you know, teach yourself something new within your, I, I love texture. So every year I try a different texture technique. You know, I teach myself a different texture technique, but I love texture. So I'm naturally inclined to do better. Um, but again, like even Dallin was like, you need to come out and shoot color. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Cash me outside. Uh, I am not doing that. Do I do color behind the chair? Absolutely. Am I going to compete against some of the you know industry's best colorists? Well, that was no. funny because that one year I said, well, you know what? I'm going to shoot for contemporary classic. And I'm like, you know what? I'm... Right. I don't know what I'm doing, right. but I shot it anyway. Of course, it didn't make it, but you know, I think that by us trying new things and like we're talking about in our class, being comfortably uncomfortable, those are the things that take you from being a good stylist to a great stylist, and a, from a great stylist to being unstoppable mm -hmm. in the industry. So, for those Beacon students out there, and for everybody out in in Hair Nerd Land, you know, this is this is this is how creatives actually work. Um, it took. You know, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years now. I think, Dal, and you at what? 17. 17, and babe, you, you 19. got 19 years. So you got almost 60 years <laughs> before we get old, aren't we? And it doesn't happen overnight, and that's the thing, too. I think, right. you, you know, you said in the class earlier is, you know, people try to take the escalator. Right. You know, when I try to talk to my students, like, it takes time. It took me a long time. seven years to finally get a nomination, and I, yeah. I still didn't get nominated after, the, you know, two years later, but I'm still doing what I love doing. Right. And, you know, capitalizing on your win. Absolutely. Capitalizing what you're doing Absolutely. where you want to go. Well, I think it's all about leveraging it, too. So what we're talking about, you know, there's been times where we didn't get nominated, but we still came to the event. We still went to Naha. We still made sure that in some way, shape, or form, you know, we were involved with the whole process. And I think that that's what, it, that's what a real winner does. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's about showing up. It's about working hard. And it's about listening, not just to other people, but listening to your gut as well. Um, so as you all can see right here, we got them blended in. I use my texturizing shears. I'm using a shear over comb technique to help to soften up this line. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my comb and notice where my hand placement is right here. I'm making sure that I keep it flat against his head. I want to make sure that the spine itself is flat on his head. Now, as you can see, look at how the small hairs, the spine of the comb are pushing up the, the small hairs. This is what I want to do here. I rock it out and I use my texturizing blades to soften that line up. Remember, the, the easiest way to take a line out of a men's haircut is to not put one in. What these texturizing blades do, or the texturizing shears do, is help to soften up that line so that you can have a nice, smooth blend once you take this little small weight line out right here. So I can use texturizing shears, or there's also a blade that I like to use that I use on my Naha shoot as well, is a texturizing blade. So you can use your clippers as mechanical shears. Okay, see? And this will do the same thing. The difference with this blade is it has 26 teeth across the bottom, but it only has one, two, three, four, five cutting blades. So it's going to reduce or debulk versus cut length. And we can show you how I can show you how that works as well. I want to make sure that I keep the blade flat here, and I'm going to make a C cutting motion. And I'll go through this panel right here. Now, notice just with me making a few passes here and you can see the difference here, I lightened up where that weight line was right here by using the edge of the blade as if it were a shear and I point cut. And look how that just reduced that weight line. So see the difference from here? Okay. Now, the other thing you notice that I did right here is I sectioned this off. I'm going to come back through after we kind of go down the line and see what everybody else is doing and showing you guys how to use your mechanical shears to cut longer layers uh, for men's hair cutting as well. Babe, that looks amazing. Thanks. All right, going. still working, still working, still working. Um, I'm happy with how far we've gone back. I'm going to have you tip your head down. You can see that I went about halfway across the top of her head. But since we're just looking at the front, that's all I want to worry about for now. Um, <laughs> I took a side piece of her hair and I braided it. And then I just went through and sort of pulled the edges out to open these up a bit. What I need to do is hide the band. When I did this on set, um, I always go into Naha shoots for texture with ideas. Um, I very rarely practice them before I get on set, and everybody has a different opinion about that. You know, Some people say practice, 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 so there's no surprises on set. We always shoot ours out of state. 
So a lot of times I don't know what my model's hair looks like until I get there anyway. So if I practice too much and then I get there and the model has different hair than I had practiced on, then I freeze and I can't think past how am I going to get out of this. And your mood board is in your head. It's in my head. <laughs> but I shoot, with, right here, I shoot with a photographer that... <laughs> Can somehow see inside my head, so that works out. And who was that? Who who was that? The photographer that actually shot that wedding. Travis Teat. Big shout out to Travis Teat, South Carolina Citadel Brad. What up, boy? Glad you back. Holla. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I get excited. He's my friend. <laughs> I, love I love it. So yeah. So I mean, I like to work with a group of people that understand my creativity, and Travis seems to get it. We like to finish each other's sentences and. It's really, guys, listen, it's really weird on set. So I'm sitting there, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm a barber. So they are like, hey, Trav, what? He's like, oh, I got it. I got it. And next thing I know, they're shooting something. And I'm like, I, I just asked if y'all wanted pizza. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but, um, but you know, though, it's good to have that kind of synergy with your photographer as well. Since we're talking about Naha and, and things like that, would you like to, would you guys like to elaborate a little bit more on From the photography? photographers? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so it's been years of me doing photography and last prior year I decided I'm just going to start picking up a camera and shooting with my wife and we used our savings and you know, got a camera and our first Naha that we ever Investment. shot got nominated. Investment. Investment. Yes. We shot on a whiteboard like it was nothing special. We didn't have a backdrop. We literally just shot on a whiteboard and her name was Kayla um, Rafino. She was nominated that year and my other good friend that we mentored his name was Evan and he was off obviously one newcomer that year so it was kind of cool just to really see like if you don't know just pick up a camera like use your iPhone there's so many things like the person that's behind this iPhone right now that's filming for us he has all these gadgets and I was like oh my god like I didn't know there's those, those things you know so on a photographer side of things is you definitely want to find a tribe that you yeah. can vibe with and yeah. do great things. You know, I have a really good group of friends that, you know, is under House of Flynn that we just get together almost every weekend and we shoot and create this work and just have fun because that's what it's about is inspiring each other and inspiring other people out there that, like, it really can be done. Like, yeah. We talked about that a lot last night over dinner, too, is that I think a lot of people don't enter because they think it has to be this $20,000 production. And some of them are. Just not ours. <laughs> well, and you know, not everybody can afford that, and that's okay. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to get a second-rate photographer if you're not paying your photographer five thousand dollars for your one collection. You know, for a lot of us that are new into the industry, that's a lot of money to, to spend. Um, but there are other photographers out there that that are more affordable. I think. Yeah. If you guys had to give some inspiration, or if you guys had to give, um, you know, because of course, you know, we actually deal with a lot of students. Um, we're going to be on the Beacon panel. They're going to be at Naha for the first time. What would be some some inspiring words that you would give some of those students that are watching from the hair nerd community right now about entering and or why sh they should why should they actually eat, uh, enter Beacon? Um, so Beacon for me as a as an educator. I think with the students, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. That is a platform where you are hanging with the best of the best. Sure. You know, those who are going this year, indulge in it and be with the cool people. You know, you earned it. And I think those who are haven't done it and want to do it, step outside the box. Right. Be creative and enjoy the process. You know, we, I, we did Taha today and I said, may not all of you have been nominated, but at the same time, like, it's the journey. It's what you're learning about yourself and mm -hmm. what sure. you could do better next year or the year after or, or you know whatever it may be but I think as a beacon there's such a great platform for us to come together as hairdressers and Absolutely. also for the new generation because I'm what 35 this year and I'm not going to be around forever you guys in the next generation so yeah. get on it be, right. be part of that you know tribe and this year, Lauren um, actually did something that has been a first in PVA history as well. So we had an apprentice to enter Beacon, and this is the first apprentice to actually be in the Beacon program. Right. So tell us how, well, I know that we're proud of, of her as right. well. But uh, My apprentice, Tammy, shout out to Tammy. Hey, Tam, Tam. what's up, girl? We'll see you next week. Um, but we, we helped coach her through entering Beacon, and she made it, and we're so proud of her, and so she'll be joining us in, in Vegas. And it's kind of exciting to be a part of something that hasn't happened yet. You yeah. know? And it opens it up to a lot. I know there's other apprentices out there, mm -hmm. and maybe they aren't getting the coaching from their, from their trainers, but you, know, you can do this on your own. 
and you know we can help you if you need advice or anything like that. Yeah. So you know, a lot of times I think when people see us at the Harris shows and stuff like that, we're so busy. Remember this: we're neighborhood without Hollywood. So if you have a question, <laughs> yeah, well, that's a real thing, true. right? It's not true. So if you have a question about something, or if you you know you want to pick somebody's brain or whatever the case may be, we're always openly and readily available um, to answer questions. And speaking of Beacon as well, we have. Um, did you guys have any any Beacon students this year? Yeah, we have fourteen going. Okay, so they have fourteen. Yeah. Lauren and I have one, and then at the school where I'm the director, we also have a barber student, which I think is the first time they've ever had a barber student enter Beacon and also to make it too. So shout out to Sia Rice, I hope you all are watching, Tam, and all of the students that are here at Taylor Andrews where we're creating this stuff. Congratulations to all of them. So um, can, uh, can we bring the camera just a little bit closer? I just wanted to kind of continue where we're going. So right here, I'm actually going through Marcus's hair. I'm actually using my guide, and I'm known as a clipper cutter. Uh, this is what I've done and kind of made my, made, my, made my mark in the industry. But this young lady, again, she pushed me to enter Naha. She pushed me to, 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 to push myself well, and also with cheer cutting too. So thank you, sweetheart, for yeah, pushing me to the next level. And it's I, not always easy. I know I get on your nerves <laughs> and stuff like that, but that's the love. Um, that's, so, the, that's the love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, I think I went into some uncharted territories right then. I'm not sure. But um, I'm actually going through trimming, trimming up the sides right here. And as you all can see, I got them kind of blended right here on this side where I wanted them to be. See how that's nice and blended? We only use guards. I mean, uh, detachable blades. And now I'm kind of going through and using my shears, making sure he's nice and even. I'm using my shears here, holding my comb down to make sure that I stay with my guide, holding my shears flat across my fingers, and I'm cutting. Also, a uh, big shout out to Simon Miller for giving me my shears. Appreciate you, homeboy. These are some dope ones. I don't want to give shout outs because I can't, but um, I love you. Thank you. What you got going on, sweetheart? Um, okay, so I just braided some pieces on the side and wrapped them around to hide the band. I usually work with a mirror in front of me, so I'm hoping this front looks as good yeah, as one in front of you, sweetie. Not in front of oh. me, in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Um, I know how I'm like, hopefully this looks balanced. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all like that. I like to work with mirrors, especially when I'm shooting Naha, because you can work at the angle the camera's going to see and know that you're covered. So I did this, and in the back... I just want to show, because we're not showing the back, I could just wrap all this hair up and, and hide it. But from the front, you see everything that I want it to see. So you can see that each style for that you shoot for Naha doesn't necessarily need to take all day if you are focused on what is being seen. Do you do that sometimes too, Dad? Yeah, I totally do that. I, the back is not my favorite, but... You don't have to see the back. Right, you don't have to see it. So, and I think as hairstylists, we're so used to working on clients where everything has to be balanced, and you always have that one side that's perfect and that other side that's not perfect. When you're shooting for Naha, the camera is only going to see one side. It's two-dimensional. So you just need to pick your side. That's the beauty of pre-planning, is you know what side is going to be seen and what side isn't going to be seen. But I'm going to take this down and show you guys a different look that you could do with this. So I know that when you did this collection before, a lot of people were thinking like, you know, um, how, how does this speak texture to you? So it's kind of loose, it still has some fuzz over it, and I, and, I, and I like that about it as well. Well, I think texture to me is texture. I mean, so often, I think it's one of the, the harder categories because you have to take this unruly thing and mm -hmm. make it a work of art. And so you have to really know how to control texture and to me, it's not about controlling it so much that it's no longer there. Right. Um, but controlling it and molding it in a way that it's interesting to look at without being so controlled that it's no longer has any texture to it. Because we see that sometimes yeah. too, which I think, I have my own opinions about that. <laughs> That's an off-camera conversation that we'll have one day. But, um, but I believe with the texture category that you should see the texture. That's the name of the category. So it's really important to take the texture and the hardest part about it is making it look like art instead of just a hot mess of fuzz on someone's head. So I'm gonna work on this. Why don't we see what Dal's doing over there? Bubble Dal. Uncle Dal. So I've used these blades of grass and I've cut them up and made these cool little ribbons throughout this. 
to be part of it. Little birds of paradise, I guess you can say. So right now I'm just gonna, I sprayed this up here to dry with hairspray and I'll take that bobby pin off. But if you wanna come around, you can see that we took the two basket weaving, made this beautiful piece, and then now to use these back here to create balance as well. So for me, when I do avant-garde work, I wanna do something different that, you know, you see everyone do basket weaving, you see everyone do, you know, blades of grass, but for me, I wanted to create something that was me and where my culture, where I'm from, where my wife is from, and what I really have learned to love is the Hawaiian culture to bring that. So I think that's another thing is inspiration. Inspiration is all over the world. And, you know, I have a mind, and I'm sure you guys do this as well. You're walking through the, you know, the mall and you're like, that texture is cool or, right. you know, that, that model's haircut's great. Like, it's just the craziest thing to think, like, there's so many inspirations out there and it could be different for everyone. Well, a lot of times with texture, I'll see a shape that I like and then think, okay, what kind of texture could I use to create that shape? Yeah. And so that's where a lot of my inspiration comes is in shapes. Mm -hmm. And then I, like this, I was inspired by, it was actually, um, trying to remember where the picture was, but it was just this big fluffy, it almost looked like a dandelion fluff, you know, just really round. And I was like, well, I really like that shape. How could I create that with my own spin on it? And I thought, okay, well, if we crimp the hair and pull it through a knit cap, it's gonna create all these little textured loops. And we see it a lot now, but I hadn't seen it up until the point that I did it in 2015, or well, actually shot it in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to sort of come up with how I was gonna create that without really knowing how. And so I thought, okay, well, I could pull it through this cap and that would be really good. And it was actually really funny. Dal, can I use your hair spray real quick? Yeah. I was doing, um, I was teaching this in a class and I got done and I just gave it a little spray and I was like, okay, this is good, this is good. And I let it dry for a second. And I did this, here you go, I'll give it back to you. Um, I let it dry and this was on a mannequin. so. I was just standing there talking to the students after class and I, I was done with my part so I went to take this cap off and I went and I was like, okay, we're done. And I pulled it off. Sorry, I'm pulling it really hard. But when you pull this off, it creates a totally different kind of look. Mm -hmm. And this happens a lot where you find like a happy accident. Is that what you call it? Yeah, happy, happy accident. Happy accident, right? <laughs> so now you have all this texture in here that's a little bit different. You can still see where the loops are, but if I were to pin this back. This would be in somebody's Naha collection next year. Totally fine, <laughs> totally fine with that. That's what I'm here for. So if you guys don't mind, I want to uh, talk with Krista over here. So Krista kind of helped prep our model today. Okay. Sure. She's the makeup artist. I awesome. She's the makeup on our model. And Krista, come over here for a second. Chris is a newer person as well. I would say you went to Taylor Andrews, right? Mm -hmm. And she shot for the first time this year at Salon Team. Nice. Nice. Doing hair and also being helping with makeup. So just talk real quick with kind of the look that you did for them. Real simple, two seconds. For their yeah. makeup? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just went for her. I went kind of more natural because I wasn't sure what she was going to be wearing or what she was going to be doing, and you can't go wrong with natural, just like light contour. Um, and then over here, I knew she was going to be wearing this, but I didn't want to take away from the color, like the bright colors of the hair. So I just did like a smoky eye with like a little bit of purple in it and just a little wing to give that dramatic effect, but still trying to keep it not too dramatic. Um, but yeah. What was your experience on Naha this year being your first time? Like, what did you oh, love about it? <laughs> I, <laughs> it was really fun. Um, it was really stressful as well, but like, it's crazy what people can do when they work together. And there was like incredible teamwork with my salon and it was just amazing. Like we all got along, we, we hated each other, but we loved each other still. Uh -huh. Like <laughs> at the end of the day, it was so, it was Isn't it was that how it goes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For real. For real. So, um, where can people find you if they want to find you on Instagram? Um, my Instagram is the hair siren, and it's a period in between every word. So the hair siren at Dallas Roberts. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Thanks you for the makeup. Yeah, they you. look yeah. great. Awesome. Well, um, Lauren and Roger were teaching class. I was like, Krista, the model's here. I, know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize. So. <laughs> we also have Taylor Andrews, barber instructor here, uh, Marcus. I call him um, <laughs> the quiet riot. Um, so Marcus Medina here. Um, tell us about you know 
how you get inspired because you also shoot with Ballad um, with the House of Flint is coming out as well. So tell us a little bit about your experience and how you motivate your students and why do you think it's so important to, to enter Beacon and to, uh, you know, to compete as well. Yeah, so... Um, oh, and I'm sorry, and you were just featured in... Uh, for Father's Day, what was it? Oh, Cosmoprof. Cosmoprof, yeah. dope. Yeah, a little article in there. Um, yeah, so I went to cosmetology school and got more interested in barbering. Where'd you go? Taylor Andrews here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless <laughs> quotes. <laughs> Throw that plug in there. <laughs> Something in the water here. <laughs> Who was your educator? Dallin. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, went to cosmetology school and then got more interested in barbering and then his always been involved in art so been interested in avant-garde um have entered naha about three times avant-garde collections and then yeah just letting my students know like all the avenues that are out there in, in this industry like you can be involved in anything which i think is awesome um and then having down here and them just seeing like the behind the scenes of the shoots that we do and stuff and i don't know it's just it's my passion Dallin's passion Lauren and Roderick, and for Larry to bring all these amazing guests in, it's just awesome. And having my students being able to see that, instead of just doing, you know, the barbering course and then taking their state boards and figuring out on their own, it's awesome that they get to see that in school, you know. I love that. Yeah, so you're done? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, good, good. Just kidding. Good, good, good. So, um, as you all can see, for all the listeners out there, we greatly appreciate everybody. Big shout out to Larry Curtis for letting us use his school, bringing us in. Um, Lauren and I love sharing with students as well. Um, Lauren is really, really passionate about what she does. She likes to share everything that she's learned. And one of the things that I think that is, that's really, really true about myself, Lauren, and Dallin is that there's nothing that we have that you can't have. If you have a question and want to know how we created something, you want to start a salon, you want to start your own school, you want to do editorial, you know, you see us at hair shows, you see us at classes, don't ever feel like you can't come up to us. Um, that's what we're about. Our job as leaders are, is to create more leaders. And as leaders in our industry, uh, anything that we can do to help you guys out, I think that's awesome. So um, you guys want to talk about your looks? Go, you're first. first. Oh, all right, well. <laughs> After I destroyed my look. Um, so this is just a little different spin on what I did, but you can, if you get in close, you can see all the little loops that are still in here, even though we pulled the cap off. So it's interesting to try different techniques and then expand on them and see what else you can create from that original look. The back is a hot mess because we don't shoot the back. Sometimes we shoot the back. If we shot the back, it would be not a hot mess. But, but I think that this texture is really fun and you could refine it even more and go in and mess with it. The cool thing about working with texture is that it's moldable. So as long as you're not afraid to touch it, and I think that's, it took me a long time in this industry to not be afraid to get in there and just really like manhandle the hair. Cause you're afraid that you're gonna take it too far or not far enough or mess it up or. Well, like you said earlier, when we're in a class, you said that we were taught as hairdressers, don't touch texture, don't right. touch curly hair. Don't right. like, so only scrunch it in the end. And that was an aha moment for me is like, I remember my teacher saying, let it air dry. Right. Just put the product on the end and leave it alone. Right. But like, like you said, the more you prep it and get it to where you want, you can really mold and do anything you yeah, want. Yeah, and that's it. what I love about texture is that it, it lives in projection. So you, you can, I look at it more as like sculpting as opposed to anything else. But you can really sculpt it into any look you want. So that's why I love the texture category so much is because you can really go anywhere with it. There's so many different avenues of texture that you yeah. can play with in within that category. So I love it and um, yeah, I think it's pretty fun. But yeah, don't be afraid to get in there and really mess it up. I mean, you could even part it and create different shapes that way, you know, make it bigger on one side. So my advice is to really maybe not practice the look you're gonna do if you don't want to, but really get familiar with textured hair and what you can do with it, whether it's crimping or um, dealing with natural curl or creating texture, but have fun with it. Cool. Go I down. love it. So as you can see, my finished piece through here, it's kind of big. I like big things uh, like this uh, to really, at any angle, if I really wanted to, I could shoot it you know, this mm -hmm. way. I could shoot it straight on. If I wanted, I could shoot it this side. Probably more not this side because I, you know, the balance through here is not the best. I see a bobby pin there. <clears throat> but this is Boo Boo. She's, uh, 
She's Tongan, correct? Yes. Tongan. So I have Tongan. So I think it was really beautiful to throw this on, you know, a, a girl from, you know, the, the islands. And I look at this and I think birds of paradise, like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. It's just really cool that you can incorporate the basket weaving with these ribbons and create this a beautiful piece. And this is the piece I took to Tokyo because I don't think a lot of people know, but in Japan, they love Hawaiian culture. They love the luau's. They love all those things. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share what I love that's special to me and bring it to them as well. So I love it. I think it's fun. You know, I keep these in a box so I can reuse them and, you know, shoot with them and do whatever I need to do. So that's another thing, too, is when you prep, you know, and you do get nominated or you do things, capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. Make something that's structural that you can take down put back on because mm -hmm. you just never know when you have a piece. You know, Roger told me a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, I wonder what I'll do. And then I was like, oh, I totally forgot. I had this cool piece. And have this in a box. I have this in a box. <laughs> and pull it out and brush out the wig and all those cool things. So I love it. This is what I live for. I love for crazy avant-garde but at the same time inspiring other people and it's not that hard it's simple easy the foundations is donuts mm -hmm. got them at forever 21 for a dollar 24 you know the hair is sponsored by um, hair couture so building those relationships with people that really want to watch your vision grow i think is also important mm -hmm. um, and how did you how did you get um linked up with them just being showing up at things just and... showing up at the shows and talking back and forth building relationships like we say you know mm -hmm. you need to build those relationships if you want to go places and do things and i think that's really important and at the end of the day be nice i was just gonna say be that nice. a smile goes a long way be nice and you know compliment on people's other stuff you know everyone wants the likes on instagram and the, the comments on on uh, facebook but at the end of the day to me, a comment's really nothing as long as I know you. Right, know be nice you, in real life. Yeah, be real nice. Because well, it's always great to just be nice and go up and introduce yourselves to people. Go to the shows and introduce introduce yourselves to the people at the booth. Yeah. Or, you know, the people that are working the main stage. Can I help you? Do you need an assistant? Do you need help? What can I do for you? And I know we do main stage, and sometimes it gets so chaotic. You're like, can you just go find my model? Or could you go get my model checked in? Or, you know, we always need help with just little things. Yeah. but. The experience that you get and how to run a main stage or how to do a classroom or whatever is great so yeah always put yourself out there yeah and it doesn't hurt to message people because when people message me hey i'm at the show can i come help yes i'd love you yeah. here's what you say we, yeah. need, we need help it we need doesn't help. take you know one person to put on something like you know six or seven models it takes a, an army yeah and it's a lot of work so don't be afraid to reach out to us and you know especially me i'm always i'm an educator at heart and i love what i do and i love inspiring people and students and I'm not afraid to share my secrets because there's really no secrets to hide. Excuse me, I'm always disorganized, so I probably need more help than <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, that's true. So, I need to make yeah. sure that I write down all my color formulas <laughs> on my laptop. <laughs> For sure. But it's awesome. Um, so I just want to kind of show my last look as well. Uh, I we came back through and I used some firm whole gel to make sure that his mustache was real, real nice and shapely. Um, I used real firm uh, whole gel as well uh, for my Naha collection to kind of give those handlebar mustaches that shape. Came back through, used a little bit here at the top, used a wide tooth comb to give it a little bit more texture. And this is a different variation of my Naha look as well. So um, we're actually down to about five more minutes left. So what I want to do is um, I just want to kind of show exactly what we went through kind of go over a little demo of, of, of what we did and kind of break it down. So I faded the sides up right right, uh, right on the sides. I use um, detachable blades versus the plastic guards because the hair feeds a lot more evenly through it. And as you guys can see, it gives a real, real nice blended look as well. Came back through, added a lot of texture in the top because um, with men's grooming and styling, the way that it's going right now is everybody's going for that nice over the top kind of look. And you, by using a wide tooth comb like this, you see a lot of pictures on Instagram and how people have it nice and PC. They're using comb with a little bit of product and just kind of using that comb to help to create that look and also build that shape. All right. So we got him here. And as you can see, his mustache, the handlebar is all good as well. And uh, so this is one of the looks that I created from my Naha 2017 um, nominated collection. Hi, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, it's on, it's on, it's on you. you. Did you want to give um, the hair nerds community some words of wisdom before we leave? Um, well, you can't win if you don't try. Dig so it. we'll start there. Um, and I know for me, as humbling as it is, 
to be nominated. Um, it's also pretty humbling not to be nominated. So, um, but for me, when I'm not nominated, I, it's always, I'm always in competition with myself more than I am other people. So I'm always trying to do better than I did the year before. So I don't look at what everyone else is doing and hold myself next to that. Um, I, I look to get better on my own and to make sure that I'm always growing and that I'm always happy with my collection. Because at the end of the day, if I shoot for me instead of shooting for Naha, I'm always more successful. And I mean, just like Roderick said, he was always trying to stick himself in a box, somebody else's box instead of his own. So as long as you're being true to yourself and you're learning from it, then you're a winner. Absolutely. How about Uncle Dal, you got anything? Yeah, this is what you both said. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's like you just never know unless you don't try. And, right. You know, and it's, it's scary though, right? Yeah, I mean, scary. it's always, and you put yourself out there, you're wrong. You put a lot of wrong. money in there and you do mm -hmm. everything you can. And you know, like I said, it took me seven years. And even after that, I still haven't been nominated. And you're just like, what am I doing wrong? But at the same time, you got to think about the journey. Right. Think about what you're doing, what you're creating. What you're doing, right. And mm -hmm. how you are inspiring other people. Because my images are everywhere, and even mm -hmm. stuff that I'm doing now, like you know, I publish and other things as well. But at the end of the day, you just never know unless you don't try and don't give up. Right. Don't Follow give up. Follow your dreams and do what you got to do because you're going to be in charge of your own success. Absolutely. Right. right. And, you know, I think a lot of people, um, what they do, especially when it comes down to this competition, is always somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's always some. Well, this person didn't do this or. The model face was crooked and her nose stuck up or whatever the case may be. But, you know, what I would like to challenge everybody, uh, all the hair nerd community, is that for 2018, we're not going to make excuses anymore. We're going to make efforts. And I think that the three of us, we continuously make efforts. Um, Naha is one of those things where you love it, you hate it, <laughs> and you love it again. And it's a cycle like we were talking about last night. You know, it's time for us to start shooting for... Naha 2018. So we started working on collections and brainstorming and stuff like that. So, um, you know, whatever it is, just remember to be the best, you must stand the test for hard work and only hard work pays off. And um, we're happy to have the hair nerds to let us take over their Facebook Live. Uh, we're here at Taylor Andrews Academy. Uh, we taught two classes yesterday, or class yesterday, class today. Um, we want to give a shout out to Dallin and Jamie for all their hospitality. Uh, we're from Detroit. They made us feel right at home. So um, we are now going to sign off. All from right. Thank you. Taylor Andrews Academy. Thank you. Roger Sanders. Hey. This is Dallin Flint and the lovely, lovely, my fiance, Ms. Lauren Moser. And we are out. Thank you all so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Naha. And remember, tickets are still available. Go to pba.org. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.